We are back with Nikachu, one of your favorite guests, and there is a specific type of archetype that you play. What do you play in Magic? I play Merfolk. This is a very fishy archetype. Basically, this is like the mermaid archetype of Magic the Gathering. I've been proficient with it for 10, 10 years now. So I heard you guys have some Merfolk, however, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes, we do have a lot of merfolk type fish sea serpent and aqua things and there's a, a lot of different water archetypes that you can jam some merfolk looking things into and i'm excited to show you three different archetypes that are all water based and they're all fishy and you're gonna tell me which one you think was meta at one point and i do have a little bit of a surprise twist for you at the end so make sure you stick around for that one um I also heard that you just finished watching the first season of the anime, okay? What do you think? Oh, I thought, well, I thought it was uh, pretty great up front. Then it was, like, really slow when they were on Pegasus Island. But when they made it to the finals, that was the most riveting finals of all time. I had to watch the entire episode back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, uh, of the Pegasus versus Yugi match of Millennium Finals. No, it was, it was, it was amazing. Spoiler alert. Pegasus is cheating all around. He's playing with banned cards, and he still loses to the heart of the cards. Because you have to let the heart of the cards guide you, and you are going to let the heart of the cards hopefully guide you in deciding which of these archetypes were meta at one point, and I'll give you the surprise twist at the end. Are you ready for the first archetype? I'm ready, all right. All right. First off, we're going to start you with the most merfolk of archetypes. <laughs> and then we'll trick her down from there. Ooh, we've got the Mermail Abysland. As for three Dragon Balls, we've got an attack of 1500, defense 1200. It is an Aqua effect. If this card on the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Mermail monster from your deck, except Mermail Abysland. Uh, you can only use this effect of Mermail Abyss Abyssland once per turn. This actually looks amazing. I'm just wondering, do they have like a lot of sacrifice effects? Or don't they? You have to sacrifice your creatures to special, special summon larger creatures, don't you? Yes, but it doesn't... Sacrificing a creature to normal summon a level 5 or higher creature is not considered being destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Oh, so we literally have to blow this thing up. Right. Like blowing up a beached whale. I've seen videos of yes. that before. <laughs> You've gone <laughs> deep, deep down the mer the merfolk rabbit hole on YouTube. Okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> too, you're too far. You too far in. No, your opponent. So that's can, a lot of work. <laughs> your opponent has. Your opponent can destroy this too. You don't have. You don't have to destroy. It. Oh yeah, they're really gonna destroy it for me. Oh yes, please destroy my mermail, and I will bring out my greatest mermail card from my deck. Well, you can set this. Because that's basically this. what it's going to do. Hmm? You can set this on your field and your opponent can, like, attack over it. And then it will trigger that effect. And they won't, oh, know, it's, so... they won't know it's the Abyss Land. Oh, so I could put it in defense mode, like, uh, face down or something? Yes. Oh, so they don't know they're, they're walking into a trap. Right. It doesn't even say that it's a trap card, except it is a trap. Exactly. Okay. So, you're, what are you... falling into my trap. It's the Mermail <laughs> Abyss Land. It's not yes. a trap card at all. Yes. <laughs> okay, so... You see Abyssland here, it can summon something from the deck. Okay, what would you want to summon mm -hmm. from the deck? Okay, now let's go into the things that you might want to summon from the deck. All right, the Mermail Abyss Spike is for four Dragon Balls, or for free if they kill my Abyssland. Uh, it's a fish effect. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can discard one water monster to the graveyard and add... Oh, so, okay, to the graveyard... Add one level three water monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Mermail Abyss Spike once per turn. So this is like a deck of tutoring into more tutoring. Everything tutors into each other. That's what you. But here's the is. problem. Yeah, that is, that's that's the name of Yu-Gi-Oh. It should have been called Tutoro. Okay. Uh, when this card is normal or special summoned. But if I, if I tutor it onto the battlefield, is that counting it as normal or special summoning? That counts as a special summon, correct. Oh, it is. Okay. 
I especially put it onto the battlefield for this reason. So we can discard uh, a card, put it into the graveyard to go get a one, level one or one level three water monster from the deck to our hand. All right. So we've got, uh, we're chaining our crappier creature into a bigger creature. There's always a bigger fish. Frankly, one fish is eating the larger fish, which is going to bring in on an even larger fish. There's something ironic about you saying there's always a bigger fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what would you want to search from Immermel Abyss Pike? Let's look at this card. All right, Mermel Abyss Gund. This is an aqua effect. Why does it change from aqua to fish effect? What's the difference? Like, what does it you even know, matter? One's not a fish, I guess. Okay. Uh, this is an aqua effect. If this card is discarded to the graveyard, you can target one mermail monster in your graveyard, except mermail abysgund. Special summon that target. You can only use the effect of mermail abysgund once per turn. So I can then bring back my original mermail abysland. They all sound the same. Abyslind, Abyss Spike, Abyslund. You gotta really listen carefully to know what you're casting around here. But then if I put the Abyslund in play, they know exactly what it is. Yeah. Like they're not gonna fall for the same trick twice all of a sudden. Unless they have to. Do we have any? They would have to attack over it if they or kill it by something or maybe to in order to get to your life point. So they might be forced to attack mm. over it. Or they can just, you know, banish it or return it to the deck somehow. To remove it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's possible. Okay, so you can Ooh, see how there's the kind chain, of like a little bit of the a, end of the chain, a little bit of a loop going on here, right? Yeah. Is that the end of the chain? Well, well, well you have more cards to go over. Going. Okay. All right. What are we Let's go ahead and look graveyard. at another card. The Mermail Abystius. It is also an Aqua effect. Uh, you can discard one other water monster to the graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand. When summoned this way, you can add one level four or lower mermail monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, you can only use this effect of mermail abystus once per turn. So when special summoned, you can tutor again. Right. That's what it just boils down to. Right. So we just bring out, we're just tutoring out more things. Things die. We bring them back. We tutor out more cards. They have to be different cards from the cards that we're using to tutor. How are we winning the game? <laughs> that's, that's a my great question. question. I mean, the tax for 1700 That's a great which, question. Which uh, I'm told is worthless. Which leads to me talking about this card. Oh, it's the Mermail Abyss Megalo. And it costs... Seven Dragon Balls, the most <laughs> out of all these cards so far. And it is a Sea Serpent effect. Step aside, Aqua and Fishies, I'm a Sea Serpent. You can discard two other water monsters to the graveyard. Do I have any water monsters left after, like, paying for all these other effects? Special summon this card from your hand. When uh, summoned this way, you can add one Abyss Spell Trap from your deck to your hand. You contribute one other attack position water monster. This card can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. Oh, interesting. So in theory, you could attack twice and kill your opponent. Right. Attack for 2400, attack for 2400. Assuming they have nothing in play, like, to defend themselves. Right. And oh, excellent. this is five cards, kill. and we usually go over five cards per archetype. Mermail Abyss Megalo can search for a spell or trap. It can usually search for a spell card that you can play that will negate the first spell card your opponent would play. Or it can search a trap card that special summons a mermail monster from your deck, and then it destroys this card on your opponent's next end phase after the activation. So usually people would like use the trap search the trap card with Megalo, and then use the trap card to summon out the Abyss Lind. And then, it, and then if the trap card dies, the Abyss Lind dies, and that would trigger the Abyss Lind's destruction effect to special summon Abyss Pike from your graveyard, from your deck, and keep the loop going. So, like, if the, Abyss, the trap card goes down, so does the Abyss Lind? Yes, but you want the Abyss Lind to go down. Yeah, of course. So it's you're kind of like... to die. You're, you're kind of, like, uh, self, like, like self-assuring that your opponent doesn't have to get rid of it, if they don't get rid of it or whatever, it will get rid of itself. 
and then you yeah. can like start summoning from the deck and, and doing your like discard things or whatever. But that is a good question that you wrote, that you asked, a good point that you were talking about is what happens to your hand? Like there's like a lot of these things have discard effects, right? And like how are you refilling yeah. your hand, things like that. So that is a a flaw that that is present in Remrel, and you did catch that. So uh, why don't, <laughs> why don't we look at another water archetype, uh, another Merfolky archetype, and see if what you think about this next one? Sure. What's very funny though is uh, that you know Merfolk in Magic: The Gathering never has enough cards in hand, and it looks like the same thing uh in Yu-Gi-Oh, you just never have enough cards in hand <laughs> so, listen the more things change the more things stay the same Nikachu. yeah exactly even in parallel universes yeah exactly uh like planes and the shadow realm yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay let's go ahead and go to another archetype and this one is going to be pretty interesting because we're going to start out with a spell card first Okay, okay. Ooh, we got a. Oh, that now that looks like a big tuna. Okay, white <laughs> reincarnation. When this card is activated, add one fish monster with an effect that treats itself as a tuner from your deck to your hand. What's a tuner? A tuner is the thing you put in the graveyard to summon your big, uh, you know, white synchro monster from your companion zone, your fifteen card companion zone extra deck. You need, you need at least wow, a tuner and a non-tuner in most cases and put them in the graveyard to summon the monster out of your extra deck. All right, the extra deck monsters are really good, so that's not bad. So we uh, add one fish monster with an effect that treats itself uh, from your deck to your hand. Once per turn at the end of the damage step, if your white aura monster attacked, you can activate this effect. The attacking monster can make a second attack in a row. Once per turn, if a level 8 or higher fish synchro monster is special summoned from your graveyard, even during the damage step, you can destroy all monsters your opponent's control. You can only activate one white reincarnation per turn. I have no idea why you started me off with this card. This card makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Because <laughs> it's part of the white aura archetype and then when this card is activated it's like a tutor to search for a fish monster that has the ability to become a tuner yeah well okay that part that part was clear the rest of it was not well it doesn't have to be clear don't worry about that part okay <laughs> that's a lot that's, that's, that's the thing you do with a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards you just like memorize what it does and you're like oh it's that thing and then you just like don't read the rest of it it does yeah, this the thing. rest of it's not relevant this is it's just a tutor yeah it, it just searches for something that, that's all it does don't worry Searches about it. Your opponent, your opponent doesn't have to else. read what your, your opponent doesn't have to know that you're that you can attack twice with something. It just says that somewhere in the text. They don't. They they don't. They don't. They won't get it. You'll you'll just I attack twice. Playing Yu Gi Oh for the. I can only imagine playing Yu Gi Oh for the first time and someone just like basically completely fleeces me by like you know just doing whatever they want. They could just say whatever they want to say uh, about any card. I can't, like, correct them on anything. I was like, okay, that, yeah, that will do that. Oh, and then, you know, they could tutor for, like, ten cards in their deck, you know, play any card, draw five. I just have to believe them. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah you can't just, you can't just not know what your opponents are doing. You have to know what their cards do. Yeah, well, no, that, and that's my problem. I can't, I don't know what this whole card does if I'm only going to read the first sentence of it. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and look over what this card might be able to search, and you'll see okay, yeah. you'll see how it works with like, oh, this thing can become a tuner. What does that mean? Like, okay, let's read this card. Aha, uh -huh, the white sardine. It's a fish effect. It has no defense. That is so sad. But it is two Dragon Balls, so I guess that's the right price for it. You can send one white sardine from your deck to the graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon for from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except water monsters. You can only use this effect of white sardine once per turn. If this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you can treat it as a tuner this turn. Oh, interesting. So if we special summon it from the graveyard, it can be considered a tuner. Would this then become be considered the tuner? Yeah, this, th what we're this card for? has the ability to become a tuner, which means it can be tutored for by the continuous spell card. That's great. 
So it sounds and like a lot of work. Though. Basically, you can activate the spell card, tutor your white sardine, and then use white sardine's effect to dump a white sardine from your deck to the graveyard to special summon white sardine. This is so weird. Like these, this water archetype, they're like a reanimator sort of archetype. We're bringing them back from the graveyard back to the back to play. Yeah, I mean, so, some of the water cards do that. Um, let's go ahead and look at the next card in this archetype. And this mm -hmm. will kind of help facilitate some synchros and things like that. Go ahead and read this one. The White Sunfish for four Dragon Balls. If this card is in your hand, you can target one level four or lower monst lower fish monster in your graveyard with the same name as a card you control. Special summon this card, and if you do, special summon that monster. You can only use this effect of White Sunfish once per turn. If this card is special summoned from your graveyard, you can treat it as a tuner this turn. So you can also tutor for this thing as a tuner. Well, it says... Yep, since it has the, the ability to become a tuner, you can search this card with the continuous map. And it's cool how the White Sunfish and the white sardine can kind of work together. If you have the sardine in hand, you can use the white sunfish because the sardine in the graveyard has the same name as, a, as the sardine on your board. So it's kind of like... Oh, so it doesn't need to be the exact same name. I was, like, I was about to ask, like, if you already have the card on the battlefield, like, what do you need... Or what, what do you call the battlefield in this game? The field. Oh, it's just the field? You got rid of the <laughs> battle? All right. No problem. That's how you get around copyright. You know, learn from Yu-Gi-Oh. Exactly. We call it the battlefield around here. We call it the, the field. field. Uh, okay, so it just it just needs to share some part of the name. Well, no. Um, the like, first line again bite. says, if it's in your hand, you can target one level four lower fish in your graveyard with mm -hmm. the same name as a card you control. So let's say, for instance, let's use this sardine as an example. In order mm -hmm. to summon Sardine out of your hand, you have to send another copy of a Sardine from your deck to the graveyard, right? So now you have a Sardine yeah, in the graveyard and a Sardine on the field. And White Sunfish says, you can summon this out of your hand by targeting a level 4 lower fish in your graveyard that has the same name as a card you control. So Sardine in the graveyard has the same name as the Sardine you control. Okay, so I need to have White Sardine in play and a White Sardine in the graveyard. Yes, but the cool part is, is White Sardine sends another Sardine from the deck to the graveyard to summon itself. So it kind of like, it kind of like builds, it, builds the board for you. All right. Not terrible. And that's just in that specific situation. You can use it without Sardine. You, if you have a monster in your graveyard with the same name as one in your field, it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. Sardine. It, I'm just giving you this as an example. Right. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So it would summon itself, the Sunfish summons itself, and then also summons the Sardine out of the graveyard. And I know, I know I'm telling you a lot here on how things work, but and it's supposed to be up to you to do the analysis, so you YouTube people watching this in the comments, okay? I know sometimes <laughs> you're like, why are you helping them so much? <laughs> and I'm like... And other people are like, you aren't explaining anything to I him. know. And some people are like... You can't win yeah, over there you can't, the you can't win. You can't win. So, anyway, um, without risk of telling you too much, um, the sardine that you summon out of the graveyard with the sunfish would become a tuner because it is summoned out of the graveyard because that's the last effect of the sardine. Okay. So it's kind of like Rube Goldberging, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then we can go get something from the extra deck. Right, because the sardine becomes a tuner. And now you have a white sunfish in play, you have a sardine in play, and you have another sardine in play, but the, se but the second sardine is a tuner because it was summoned out of the graveyard. Exactly. Okay. Capiche? So far. Capiche. Okay, okay, how do we win? Now we let's look at the deck. But now let's look at the boss monsters. Starting with Was there always an extra deck? Was there always an extra deck in Yu-Gi-Oh? Yes. It was just called a fusion deck originally. Oh, okay. White Aura Mono Seros. It is it looks like some unicorn fish. For seven Dragon Balls, it's a fish synchro effect. One water tuner plus one non-tuner monsters. I guess that's the cost to get this thing in play. Right. When this, when this card is synchro summoned, you can target one fish monster in your graveyard. Special summon it. 
but it cannot attack this turn. You can only use this effect of White Aura Monoceros once per turn. If this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard, you can banish one other water monster from your graveyard. Banish? I can banish one other... Why do I want to banish anything at all? Special summon this card, and if you do, it is treated as a tuner. I can't understand if this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard, you can banish one other water monster from your graveyard. How does it ever benefit me that I, like, exile something from my own graveyard? Um, because there's certain Especially water... Especially my own creatures that I want to reanimate. There are certain water cards that could work together with this archetype, namely called the Goaty archetype that I'm not going to be showing you today, but they okay. work off of being banished. It's like, oh, during your opponent's turn, if this card was banished, you get to do this thing. Mm. So like there's okay. there are reanimation parts of water of the like the water, sea serpent fish, aqua stuff, but there's also banished stuff too. Okay. So the Shadow Realm is just another graveyard. Basically. In Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Okay. In magic, are you when ready? Something gets exiled. It's usually exiled for forever. Yeah, in magic, it's usually exiled forever unless you have like a Phyrexian processor, right? But yeah. But like in Yu Gi Oh, banish. There's a lot of cards that interact with the banish pile way more than magic. So it's kind of like a harder, harder to access graveyard. It just just to get the lore straight. When you banish something, does it go to the Shadow Realm? Of course. Well, that's what it is. Okay, good. Are you ready for the last boss monster? I am ready. Okay. I was born ready. Ooh, the white or a whale. Uh, this is eight dragon balls. It's another fish synchro effect. For one water tuner plus one non-tuner water monster. Oh, so it's a non-tuner water monster. So we just got to make sure that we regular summon some of those things and that we can... Uh, pay for it's this uh, pay for casting this thing when this card is synchro summoned you can destroy all your opponent's attack position monsters this card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase if this card attacks a defense position monster inflict piercing battle damage that sounds even more dangerous than regular damage if this card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card uh by battle or card effect and sent to your graveyard you can banish one other water monster from your graveyard special summon this card and if you do it is treated as a tuner so if i understand correctly it destroys all the creatures in attack position and then anything in defense position it like tramples over it correct that's what piercing is exactly yeah. don't worry may i probably learned that from the anime probably <laughs> I'm not sure if I did, but uh, it sounds familiar. Somehow I know it. <laughs> Either from this show or the anime. It's one of those two. Right. It didn't come from anywhere else. So th this is the end of, of the White Aura archetype. And notably, mm -hmm. this card is level 8. The 8 Dragon Balls. And the yep. Sunfish is level 4. And both of the Sardines are level 2. So 4 plus 2 plus 2 is... Eight. Eight. So you can just send all three of those to the graveyard to summon your white or a whale and wreck some havoc. Yeah, hopefully. All right. Hopefully kill them in one shot. Let's move on to the last archetype, and then we will get to your little bonus part of the show. Great. You know, what's weird from this last archetype, it looks like there's like three super old cards, and then you throw in like two newish looking cards. <laughs> That's true. That's what it looks true. like to me. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this next one, and first off, I'm going to show this one. This is a fish? This is a sea serpent. This is a sea serpent. Neptibus, the Atlantean prince, uh, has a really sad attack of 800 and no defense. Well, it is only one Dragon Ball. It is, okay, sea serpent effect. You can send one Atlantean monster from your deck to the graveyard, except... Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, and uh, add one Atlantean card from your deck to your hand, except, again, the Prince. If this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, target one Atlantean monster in your graveyard, except the Prince. Well, they have to really name this Prince like 10 times on this card. <laughs> 
Special summon it. You can only use each effect of Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, once per turn. This looks like super card advantage. So, um... Hold on, how do you activate this? You can because you you get a card from your deck and you put a card into the graveyard. Yes. So it's, this is like a two for one. This is already immediately better than the other enabler from the last archetype. Yes, and yeah, this card's pretty good. So you got that one right. This it card's pretty death, good. Yeah, it has a death trigger as well. So when it goes to the graveyard, but only to activate a water monster's effect, um, we can target a Atlantean monster in the graveyard. And special summit. This card is insane. This card looks busted. It's pretty good. Notably, notably, to, it says to activate a water monster to activate a water monster's effect, which means it has to be used as a cost. It can't be used as an effect. Mm -hmm. Like the mm -hmm. the uh, the difference between as an additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card. Basically, the difference between that and like a faithful mending, which would discard as part of the effect. Okay. Okay. Moving on to the next Atlantean card, because we're, we're going to the Atlantean archetype. Let's read this one. Atlantean Heavy Infantry for true two Dragon Balls. It doesn't attack for anything, but it defends for 1600. It also has Sea Serpent effect. During your main phase, you can normal summon one level four or lower Sea Serpent type monster in addition to your normal summon slash set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. When this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, target one face-up card your opponent controls, destroy that target. So I can special summon two cards per turn, and I can blow up my opponent's trap cards, or I guess like face-down creatures in defense mode? Only face-up cards. You can destroy oh, only face-up cards? Target one, oh sorry, fa one face-up card your opponent controls, destroy that target. That's incredible. Well, I don't know if it's incredible. I don't know how best we can use the special summoning effect, but uh, isn't it just removal? It wouldn't be a special summon effect. It would quite literally be a normal summon effect because it just says you can again. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a special summon, okay. even though it's kind of like a specialty summon. But yeah, that's confusing. Oh, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, I can only normal summon again. Uh, yeah, once again, just, normal like summoning is not normal and special summoning is more normal. Yeah, that weird. Yeah, I know. Way to, way to go, Konami. <laughs> way to confuse everybody that ever plays this game. Okay, let's okay. go ahead and move on to the next Atlantean card, and that one is this one. You kind of did some foreshadowing on this one, but let's read it. Atlantean Marksman for three Dragon Balls. Wow, they, they either attack for everything and defend for nothing, or attack for nothing and defend for everything. Yeah, it's like a glass cannon. Uh exactly uh when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent you can special summon one level four or lower atlantean sea merchant type monster from your deck except atlantean marksman when this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect target one set card your opponent controls destroy that target okay so this this is like i set this card face down now I can blow up things that are face down. No. Uh, if, one set if, card if, if this card goes, goes to the graveyard to activate a water monster, then you can kill okay, a I set understand. Card. Yeah, okay, but like yeah, that, the, before I got them confused, ah. the last one was face up, this one's face down. Right. Now the only thing, the only problem I have with all these cards so far is, uh, how are they dying? I mean, I guess they have to die through special summoning? Um, you know, Nept so far you know that Neptibus can send them for cost. Yeah, it's used to activate a water monster effect. One, right? Okay. Since Neptibus sends one to the graveyard for cost, and that would trigger but... the Atlanteans' effects. Oh, does that count? It does count since it's used to activate the effect of Neptibus. Oh, it doesn't say destroy. It just no, says, like, it just when sent it goes in to any way. Yeah, from hand, like, from, from deck, from anywhere, from anywhere. by any means possible. Right. Okay. 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 Let's I'm mixing go... my archetypes up here. <laughs> I know. Let's go ahead and read. The fourth, I believe, Atlantean card. Mm -hmm. And that one is this one. Yeah, where's my Lord of Atlantis here? Atlantean Dragoons! I got, you know, someone said in the uh, one of the past episodes, they were like, this Magic player doesn't even know what a Dragoon is. I'll tell you, I looked up how many Dragoons there are in Magic. There's like five, 
and they're all worthless. Like, I would never have come across any of those dragoons. So this is purely a Yu-Gi-Oh creature type. All right. Uh, attacks for 1,800, defense for nothing. Uh, the Sea Serpent effect. All level 3 or lower Sea Serpent type monsters you control can attack your opponent directly. When this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a Water Monsters effect, add one Sea Serpent type monster from your deck to your hand, except Atlantean Dragoons. All level 3 or lower? Problem with that is, I mean, we have mostly level 3 or lower cards so far, but... I mean, I guess, is that how we win? This is, this, is this really our Lord of Atlantis? It's like, all your crappy small creatures, all right, they can, they're unblockable. Attack them directly. That's, what, that's basically what this means, right? Right, kind of. Yeah, you can, they can attack my opponent directly. So anything in defense mode can't block. Basically. Okay. Okay. I mean, well, basically, there's well, some exceptions to this rule. Uh, there's like, yeah, like there's no blocking in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like, it's like, it doesn't matter what your opponent has in play. Like, you can just attack directly, but they, but they can't block. Oh, I thought when you put something in defense mode, that's like blocking it. Yeah, like, but if something can you... attack directly, it can attack, like, past the defense position. Oh, if you're allowed to. Well, that's what they say. That's like, you know, unblockable. Right. Unblockable. Lord of Atlantis. But normally, if you can't attack directly, you have to attack through. Right, exactly. Okay, let's go to the last Atlantean card to wrap a bow on this archetype. Pose Zedra, the Atlantean dragon. Oh my goodness. It's like it's like the Shivan dragon in blue. Also, what's it's super seven funny dragon balls. is that Yu-Gi-Oh! does this weird thing where it will say it's a dragon and then the creature type is not a dragon. Oh yeah, it happens, you know, it happens in magic all the time. Like uh what's it called? The uh, Kargan Dragon Lord. Yeah, you know, obviously the creature attacking in that image is the dragon, yet the creature type is a human. Yeah, I know. It's very annoying. It's it's like th there's also something like that as well. It's like there's one that's depicting a horse attacking, like clearly the horse is attacking, and mm -hmm. it is a human. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay, fine. It's the human riding the horse that's attacking. Okay, I get it, but like, really, really. Um, so yes, Poseidra, the Atlantean dragon, is a sea serpent. Continue. All right. You can tribute three level three or lower monster, sorry, water monsters. Uh, special summon this card from your hand or graveyard. When you do, return all spell and trap cards on the field to hand. And if you do, if three or more cards are returned to the hand by this effect all monsters your opponents currently control lose 300 attack for each okay just reading this up front this sounds terrible i have to bounce all my stuff i don't know if there's going to be any stuff left to just re just make all my opponent's creatures a little bit smaller and as far as i know as far as i understand you know uh, the attack points of my opponent's creep like monsters are worthless in this game it all comes down to all the synergies that come out of these decks right what does this mean? You can tribute three level three or lower water monsters. Ah, you've come to the important part about this card. That yes. is considered putting cards in the graveyard to activate Poseidra's effect. Okay, so I, if I sack things or put... can It, it could be come through sacrificing, destroying, or even putting them into the graveyard through some other random means? Well, since this special summon condition of Poseidra literally sends mm -hmm. the monsters to the graveyard for cost, it will trigger the Atlanteans. The other Atlanteans. Like, if this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, do X. Okay. This does that. If, like, if this is in your, in your graveyard, um, or your, if this is in your graveyard or your hand, right? So let's say you mm -hmm. just summon Neptibus, and Neptibus sends Poseidra from your deck to the graveyard, right? And you have two other Atlantean monsters on the field. And mm -hmm. you can, including like a marksman and an inf heavy infantry. You can send the Neptibus yep. and the marksman and the heavy infantry to the graveyard to use Poseidra's effect to special summon itself from your graveyard. After you oh. do that, the other, the, the, the Neptibus will trigger because it was sent to the graveyard by the water monster's effect. The heavy infantry will trigger, and that will let you destroy an opponent's card. And then the marksman will trigger, letting, your, letting you destroy one of your opponent's face down cards. So like oh, I this just helps noticed, facilitate yeah, you can special summon it from stuff. your hand or graveyard. Right. 
So we tutor for this thing into our graveyard and then basically reanimate it from the graveyard, sacrificing right. everything. Right. And then your sacri your and then your triggers will trigger. If I but if they all trigger, let's say I sack my whole board to bring this thing out. Uh, what am I even going to put back into our, my hand? Or am I going to put nothing back into my hand? Well, you can put something back in your hand if you send if you tribute a an Atlantean dragoons because if that is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, you can add a sea serpent monster back to your hand. Okay, but it still goes into my hand. I have nothing in play. So effectively, I play this. I bounce my board. Uh, well, you my tribute it. Stuff. You tribute your board. It goes to the graveyard. No, but it also says uh, when you do return all spell and trap cards on the field to hand. Like, what does that mean? Um, all of your spell spell and trap cards and all of your opponent's spell and trap cards that are on the board will go to their owner's hand. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, uh, is this... Is this going to be considered a spell? No, this is a monster. This will just go onto okay, the board. Okay, monsters are not spells, but everything else is a spell. Correct. Okay. Well, not everything, but yeah, not trap cards, not but yes. Yeah. Well, not trap cards either? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, hold on. Uh, spell cards have a very uh, specific uh, uh, card type. Right, it will say okay. spell card on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. The problem is I keep mixing up in magic like everything's a spell so long as it's on the stack. Right. Nothing no, nothing is a spell in Yu-Gi-Oh unless it says it's a spell card. Everything okay. else is not a spell card. They should have called these sea sea serpent monster effects. Like this is a monster but it doesn't say monster anywhere on this card. Uh it's a monster because it has attack and defense and it's orange colored. Okay. It's gonna have you just have to derive it from it from the card yes you do <laughs> just self derive it um anyway so yes this is like the quote-unquote boss monster of the atlantean archetype so okay i want to ask you one question and then i'm going to throw sure. in my bonus twist okay, okay. the question my question to you is which one of these decks do you think was ever meta <sighs> ever meta it was interesting. I thought, like, the first archetype looked the strongest at first. Like, oh, you're throwing out, like, a really good archetype at first. Now I'm not too sh Now I'm not too certain. Because the second one has a lot of synergy. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you which one I don't think was ever meta. And it was, like, this middle archetype with the sardines. <laughs> only because, like, you threw in, like, two super, super new cards with a bunch of old cards. Or maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe that maybe that was meta. That maybe that's a sign that it could have been meta. It's like, oh, these two new cards just got printed, and then uh, it combines with all these old cards, and it's all one format, right? There's like they don't they don't cut off the sets no. in Yu-Gi-Oh. You can play with the entire history of cards. Yeah, it's, it's like vintage. Wow, it's wild. It's actually quite insane too. How often does like a super old card become broken? Uh, quite like, often. Completely worthless, and then, uh, is, like, tier zero. Oh, quite often. There's cards that have stood the test Ooh. of time, like Mystical Space Typhoon and Enemy Controller. There are also cards that, um, were not playable for a very, very long time, that you that used to be, like, 10, 15 years ago, were never for 10 to 15 years, and are now finally playable because it has a spot in the meta. A card like Soul Release mm -hmm. comes to mind. There's a card, there's a deck called Snake Eye, Fire King that is tier one right now, and it kind of heavily relies on the graveyard doing interactions from the graveyard on your opponent's turn. And if you start out with this card called Soul Release, what Soul Release does is just banishes five cards from your opponent's graveyard. So you basically turn off a lot of your opponent's interactions by banishing cards from their graveyard. It's just a normal spell, and it's a pretty bad card. But situationally, in this meta, it's very good in the sideboard. So cards from a very, very long time ago do creep into the metagame and see play after a while, um, sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna say the middle archetype was meta, only because, like, I see some synergy and I don't mind the payoff. The payoff seems okay. When this, car when this card is synchro summoned, you can destroy all your opponent's attack uh, position monsters, and then this card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. Like, that seems okay to me. I mean... Maybe this last archetype is good too, but it's a little, little weird to me. And the first archetype required too many cards, so I actually should, I have to, I have to cut that one out. 
It's like you're not going to have enough cards to enable. I, I don't think you're going to have enough cards to enable this. You can't be playing your cards and discarding your cards to tutor for things, but maybe you can. Because if you're discarding a card to tutor for something, then it's not like you lost the card. Right. But I'll say the middle archetype was meta. Okay. This was a trick question. Oh, yeah? <laughs> because of my tricky bonus question I'm going to ask. Okay. The deck that was meta was combined with another one of these decks when it was meta. Which two decks were played in the same deck together? Okay, so these. So at one point they decide we're going to melt merge both of them together. People decided to do this and it ended up being very good. Which two decks were together? Wow. Interesting. Well, now it just comes back to this first archetype. This Abysland, which looks abysal. Ab abysmal. abysmal. <laughs> The abysmal abyss spikes and uh, so on. Can the card disadvantage from the the abyss? Are they called? The, they're just called mermails. Yeah, this is all. They're just all mermails. Yep. The mer the mermail archetype. Can the card disadvantage of the mermail archetype make up? For what was lost. So I'm still gonna. So the middle archetype, the, sorry, the, the sardine archetype. What is it called? No, the sunfish. No, the white, white sardines, white <laughs> sun, sunfish. I'm gonna still say that was part of the archetype. So it just comes down to do I wanna combine it with the super big flashy cards or the card disadvantage cards? It has to be with the new cards though. Cause these cards still look very, very good. I don't know why I would not synergize with the other archetype you can like neptibus the atlantean prince basically look for two cards put them in the graveyard or oh, sorry put one in the graveyard one in your hand why wouldn't this have synergy so the sardines don't really work do they hold on are they just gonna like act separately because the same thing happens with the abyssal cards right you can uh summon one mermail monster from your deck and we don't have, and, and you can't summon Atlantean cards. So basically they're sort of, I, I don't know, somehow working together, but like uh, in parallel, but not with each other. So if that's true, then I will just say archetypes two and three, because they just look like they're the most powerful, or at least they make the most sense to me. Okay, so you're saying white auras and Atlanteans work together. Um, yes. what, do you, what do you think is the, the, the synergy with those two archetypes that, like, catches your eye? <laughs> Nothing. Hold on, like, uh, how do we, let's, let's look at the, the payoff cards. I think I would have to be lucky to find the synergy. All level three or lower sea serpent type monsters you control can attack your opponent directly. Oh yeah, that's strong. Okay, so how big are these other creatures on the other side? Uh, the attack for, the sardine attacks for 800. 1200 from the sunfish uh, well i do have to oh, tell actually, you that no, those are fish actually doesn't attack for very much and, and those are Sorry. also not sea serpents they're also they're level four well well the the sardines level two but yes yeah the sardine was level two so actually it actually works well with the mermail abyss gunned mermail abyss spike no it doesn't work with abyss spike that's level four it would work with mermail abyssland though Okay, uh, Abysland and Abysgund. Oh, you're making me change my mind here. So I can't see, I can't see the synergy between the two, except that they're like both pretty strong uh, individually, and I'm just gonna hope that they work together. Because frankly, it looks like the the Mermails, at least most of the Mermails, can attack. Have from what you have shown me, there are more creatures that will can attack directly. I will tell so you that. You're pretty far off in analyzing the attack directly part of these cards. Okay. That doesn't matter at all. Damn. Because like in Merfolk, that's... Magic the Gathering, that is everything. <laughs> yeah. To be able to attack my opponent without my opponent blocking, that's gold. It's no. gravy, baby. No, Nikachu. That, that part does not matter. You gotta find a yeah, new synergy. I... I got. I gotta listen to the comment section. Attacking is worthless in this game. It's pointless. <laughs> I, even I can if just it see is direct. everyone in the comments being like, "No, Nikachu, stop worrying about the attacking directly. Pick a new synergy." I'm gonna give yeah, you one I'm more chance to pick a new synergy. 
It was more of a process of elimination answer. It's like A, B, or C. Well, A sucks. <laughs> so B and C. You know, you get you 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 pass you get questions right like that on the exam once in a while. I mean, we can stick with the white aura plus Atlantean archetypes if you if you'd like that to be your final answer. So this when this so when Atlantean dragoons, when it's sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, which we do constantly, we add one sea serpent type monster. Oh no, but that's just a sea serpent. It's not an aqua monster. From your deck to your hand, except Atlantean Dragon. Again, it's just like staying within. So this is like these are different families of sea monsters here. This is amazing. Oh man, I missed my I missed my chance. We're playing like a new what game show right that? now called Spot the Synergy. Like we're making it up right yeah, now. Yeah, as we go. exactly. What's I have to reread all these cards <laughs> from scratch again. You know, like after I read this archetype, I've already like profiled what I think about it, and then boom, I forgot all the cards because I have to make space for all the new cards. I'm determined. <laughs> I can see that. It's like I'm not seeing anything that is cross. The problem is I'm I'm looking for crossover and I can't find it. It's like so specific to its archetype. Okay, but the blue means water, right? They're all they're all water monsters. Okay, that's right. our first energy. I can I can cast a goddamn white or a whale with um a non-tuner Atlantean card. Correct. This is the first crossover synergy I see so far. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I've looked up and down all these cards. I give up. <laughs> okay, so you're sticking with the white auras plus the Atlanteans, right? Yes. I'm not gonna stick to the white auras. Only because I, I think the first archetype you're just gonna loot you're gonna run out of cards really quickly. Okay. And I just don't see how you recover from it. Okay. There is a synergy that you still missed. You know how you I said know, that like, the mermaid. You guys didn't see it in the video, but I've spent like 20 minutes looking for this damn thing. You have because, spent like, about left. 20 minutes looking for synergies. And yeah. so far, the most coherent one you've come up with is Atlantean Dragoons makes your other things attack directly. Well, and also... Oh, and you, you can make like the white a aura whale with, like, Poseidra the Atlantean Dragon, if you want. Yes, exactly. That's okay. Exactly. You, can have, you need a tuner and a non-tuner. And uh, okay. you know, some of these cards are non-tuners. <laughs> there are two cards that you totally glossed over. And you've never mentioned them when you were going over the cards and synergies. It is interesting. It is it is Mermel Abysteus and Mermel Abyss Megalo. Oh no! Okay, I know you like glossed over those because you never mentioned them when you're going through a 20 minute tirade trying to figure out which was synergistic or not. Okay, now think about if you uh, think about the card disadvantage. Right, you're worried about the card disadvantage of Mermels, right? Right. Think about discarding one of the Atlanteans to summon Mermail Abysteus. Abysteus has to discard a water monster to the graveyard to special summon it. So you can, if you're going second, you can like discard a heavy infantry to summon Abysteus, mm -hmm. and then you would trigger the Tius to search a card, and you also trigger the heavy infantry to kill one of your opponent's cards. And then with Tius, you can search a level four lower Mermail from your deck and add it to your hand. And what if, what if, for instance, that level four lower mermail is a mermail abyss spike? Okay. Then you can, let's say, for example, normal summon mermail abyss spike. And it says when it's normal, normal special, you can discard a water monster to the graveyard. Add a level three water monster from your deck to your hand. So let's say you discard a um, Neptibus, the Atlantean prince, for example. Okay. You discard the Atlantean Prince, then you get to search level three. And what level three are you going to search? It can be any level three. It can be Atlantean Marksman. It can be Mermail Abyss mm -hmm. Gunned, right? Because Gunned is level three and it's water. Yep. And then that would also trigger the Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince graveyard effect because it was sent to the graveyard using a water monster's effect. Mermail Abyss Spike discarding Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince to the graveyard. Atlantean Prince gets to summon an Atlantean monster from your graveyard. For example, the Atlantean Heavy Infantry that you just discarded off the other effect. 
That's very interesting. You know, I didn't even read the first archetype over again. And yeah, like you can discard any. It's funny. I read out the the second and third archetype, finding almost nothing <laughs> similar between each other. Uh, and, and, and this one says, yeah, you can discard one water monster. Yeah. The blue symbol in the top right. They're all water monsters. And also, you know, something incredible. If you normal summon at the start of your turn, you just normal summon Neptimus the Atlantean Prince, the level one Atlantean. You send an Atlantean monster from deck to the graveyard, except for Neptibus, and then you add an mm -hmm. Atlantean card from your deck to your hand. So you can send, for example, Atlantean Dragoons to the graveyard, and then you can search another copy of Atlantean Dragoons with the Neptibus Atlantean Prince. <laughs> also note that Atlantean Dragoons' graveyard effect is not once per turn. Oh, really? So you can send Dragoons to add Dragoons. And then Dragoons will trigger because it was sent to the graveyard using a water monster's effect. And then it searches for any sea serpent. Guess what's a sea serpent? Mermail Abyss Megalo. How do people find these synergies? I mean, even if I had a Millennium Eye, I wouldn't be able to figure this out. <laughs> and then since you searched another copy of Atlantean Dragoons and you also have a Mermail Abyss Megalo in your hand, you can use its other ability. You can discard two other water monsters to the graveyard special summon this card. So you discard the Dragoons and, and any other water monster in your hand to summon the Megalo. And then Dragoons triggers again to search another Sea Serpent. And then you also get the summon effect of Mermail Abyss Megalo to search for a Mermail spell or trap. So you can see how, how it, it keeps generating card advantage because Atlantoon Dragoons is not once per turn and lets you keep cycling through your deck. I should have looked at this deck like it's a graveyard deck of some sort, which is really weird since seeing as it's like a, it's a water archetype. It doesn't feel very watery to me. <laughs> feels very Golgari. -y. Yeah, it feels very, very Golgari. -y. Very, very, very. So, yes. A reanimation going on here. Yes. So, the, and, and really hard curveball here, Poseidra the Atlantean Dragon is rarely ever played at all. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, look, it's such a cool image, though. That's too bad. Right. They so the best art on the worst cards. An interaction that people did do is they would, like, set a Mermail Abyss Lind, the first card you went over, and pass turn. And then your opponent would, like, mm -hmm. attack over this. And then you can summon a Mermail Abyss Spike from your deck, and that will trigger. And you can even discard an Atlantean card from that on your opponent's turn to kill one of their cards with Atlantean Marksmen or Atlantean Heavy Infantry on their turn, and then that will trigger because you discarded it by using a Water Monster's effect. And then you get to search another level 3 monster because that's what Abyss Spike does. Abyss Pike does. So you can search another Atlantean Marksman, or you can search Abyss Gunned if you want to, and then if you have, mm -hmm. an, if you have a Mermail Abyss Megalo or Mermail Abyss Tius in your hand, you can discard the Mermail Abyss Gunned to summon it, and then Abyss Gund will trigger to special summon a Mermail, um, a uh, a Mermail monster in your graveyard to special summon it, and you can like just keep going. So really, because Atlantean Dragoons exists, you don't really run out of cards all the time with the Mermail deck. So that was kind of like the trick question at the end that um, more than one of these decks were actually played because it was the Mermails and the Atlanteans in the same deck. Interesting. Well, one thing I learned is that, I mean, I was completely off for uh, on today. You know, I've been pretty good at analyzing some of the cards on the prior uh, videos, but this one was completely dead wrong. The, you know, how Merfolk plays in Modern, how this deck plays in Yu-Gi-Oh! are just so in two polar opposite directions. They aren't even in the same stratosphere. Right. So, um, yeah, I knew I, I knew I was throwing you a curveball, and at some aspects of this might not have been fair. <laughs> But uh, it was fun nonetheless. It was more fun this way anyway. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was fun nonetheless, and you got to actually finally find out what your merfolk friends do in Yu-Gi-Oh! for the most part. There's a bunch of other water, uh, water archetypes to, um, that are in Yu-Gi-Oh! obviously, and maybe we can go over those in a different video. But as far as this one is concerned, you got like a, a crash course on all three of these archetypes, and Mermail, Mermail Atlanteans is what the deck was called when it was good, was it good for a very long time, and you would have really liked it. And you can technically still play it, but it's not that good anymore. 
So yeah, I just I just have to play against other people who are just learning the game for the first time. Exactly. You know, like me. I had a blast talking about these merfolky archetypes with you. Maybe we'll have you back on the show for some other water archetypes at some point. Maybe we'll go over the goaties that we mentioned a couple times here, and you can see how the banishing works and everything. But um, oh, interesting, yeah. But. Anyways, if you would like your chance at being on the show, go ahead and join the Patreon. All the tiers we listed down in the description below. If is if you want to do, contribute anything monetarily, even buy me a cup of coffee, you can do that. Thank you once again, Nikachu, for coming on the show. You're awesome as always. I hope you guys liked it. If you have any other recommendations for cards that you'd like to see on the show, put them down in the comments. If you want to see Nikachu come back, let me know. Hey, we want Nikachu to come back, and maybe we'll beg him again and plead him for like the seventh time to come back on the show. Anyway. Have a good rest of your day. Uh, I will see you in the next video. As always, peace.